Good morning. We thank the Lord for this morning, and uh, I will invite us to pray before we go deep into our study. Let's pray. Holy Father, what in heaven, we are so much thankful for this day and this moment that you've given us. And we pray that your spirit may be with us and continue to instruct us in the institutional work. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, uh, we thank God that uh, he's given us opportunity to come before him that we may learn on hygienic restaurant work and it's a kindred um, institutions or institutions that are connected with hygienic restaurant because uh, we as a people we are called to work according to God's pattern and the sanitarium work is the work that God ordained. Hygienic restaurant work is the work that God ordained that we may be able to reach and to the hearts of people well. Now, I want to, uh, this, I have two classes for this. I'll go for the first, uh, uh, first 30 minutes, and then we have a break of 10 minutes, and then we come for the last part, 30 minutes. Are we together? Yeah. So yesterday we were looking at uh, the hygienic restaurant and uh, we are trying to establish um, how it needs to be run, what it entails, because uh, it is an institution that needs a lot of wisdom. We are going to reach the people in the town and uh, we need to how and know how, how we need to do our, our work there. Now we talked about uh, having meetings and health talks. This should be organized over and over again, depending on the schedule that the workers and the managers of the hygienic restaurant um, is able or are able to to do or execute. It needs to have meeting after meeting. Health exports need to be done, not more than uh, three months away. Maybe after two months, you should be doing a health awareness. And the cooking uh, experiments that we are doing here need to be done in those localities. Are we together? Yeah. You need to have forums after forums in those hygienic restaurants, inviting people to come and learn how to cook, how to do simple gardening work, how to sew, and uh, how to sing. So the manager in those institutions should be organizing for such events. Yeah, you can organize for an event where people are coming to check their weight, their uh, vital signs, uh, monitoring or helping them to, uh, to interpret their vital signs, advising them on lifestyle uh, diseases and how they're supposed to live. This needs to be done over and over again. And in the process, when people come, you give them trucks, you give them books, some can be for sale, some can be free articles for distribution. Yes, you can come up with a, with a scheme of writing health newsletters. Do you know health newsletters? Yeah, that every month, someone who visits the hygienic restaurant will find a newsletter that is well, that is written well, that is, uh, um, uh, there are many remedies or 
many guidelines on Bible truth so that they can be able to read and they can get interested. Family life sessions should be organized in the hygienic restaurant. You know, many people are having problems today because of family issues. And so they, 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 um, the, the manager, as well as the workers there who are qualified to educate people can be able to organize for such meetings. Youths needs to be taught. Like you will be operating in some, uh, some uh, sessions or some time when the youth have closed school. You need to plan and know how you organize an event or an education seminar for the youth. It can be just an open air meeting. Just today, we are having one hour in the town educating the youth how they are supposed to live responsible people in the society. And you educate them on the life, uh, life skills and being a pure person uh, in this world. Now, that is your work. It is not only food ministry. It helps you to reach unto the hearts of many people. You can organize a week for doing adults' education. You know adults need education? <laughs> people do not know how to, how to live. Some people are 80 or 60 or 50 years. They do not, they do not know the basic techniques of adults. Who is an adult? What can other and others do? What are their responsibilities? That is a work that God is calling you in the city to do. In the hygienic restaurant, it is a missionary center. Did we find didn't we find that? Yes. Yes, we found out that. Well, we also found that connected with it are uh, the uh, the schools, the sanitariums. Publishing houses, is, yeah, bakery, food stores, all these lines need to work together. And there should be a garden missionary who is connected with this sanitarium. Uh, you can be having some hygienic clothes or dresses that you put there teaching people. If some people want hygienic dress, it can be put next to the hygienic restaurant. It's not seen to that. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes. I told you about tree nursery. It can be done. A grocery outside the hygienic restaurant is a what? A grocery where the fresh food stuffs are, um, are being sold. Now, um, as we continue further with this learning, I think restaurant should not be open on the Sabbath. Are we together? Well, that we find in HFM 23.22.3. I think restaurant should be closed on the Sabbath. Well, so uh, HFM Health Food Ministry, page 220, no, page 22, paragraph 3. Uh, I'll begin somewhere there. See, the line of demarcation between our people and the world must ever be kept unmistakably plain. Our platform is the law of God in which we are enjoined to observe the Sabbath day for us. Is distinct, this thing is stated in the 31st chapter of Exodus. We are to hit a heart, says the Lord, even though uh, by our obedience we cause great inconvenience to those who have no respect for the Sabbath. On one hand, we have man supposed uh, on one hand, we have man's supposed necessities. On the other, God's commands, which have the greatest weight with us. So God says that remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. In our sanitarium, the family of patients 
with the physicians, nurses, and helpers must be fed upon the Sabbath as any other family. So this uh, speaks about the sanitarium work on the Sabbath, the food needs to be provided, but on the hygienic restaurant, but our hygienic restaurant should not be open on the Sabbath. Let the workers be assured that they will have this day for the worship of God. The closed doors of the Sabbath stand the restaurant as a memorial for God, a memorial which declares that the seventh day is the Sabbath and that on it no unnecessary work is to be done. So during the Sabbath days, it needs to be closed uh, so that when these people come, they will ask, why haven't you open on a Sabbath? It says, when thinking men find that our restaurants are closed on the Sabbath, they will make inquiries in regard to the principles that lead us to close our doors on Saturday. So the Sabbath is Saturday. In answering their questions, we shall have opportunity to acquaint them with the reasons for our faith. We can give them copies of our periodicals and tracts so that they may be able to understand the difference between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Well, so on the Sabbath, make sure that it is close. When they ask you, give them tracts or explain to them very well why you are not doing that. Someone just said, oh, yesterday I came for that porridge. Say, oh, sorry, my brother, we went for a fellowship. The Sabbath day is on Saturday. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. And in that day, we need to rest. By the way, do you know that many people are sick today because they don't keep the Sabbath? I want to show you. The Bible says that come unto me all that are heavy laden and I shall give you rest. Now, this rest is the rest that we find in Jesus Christ when we accept him. But I want to show you something further. In Hebrews chapter 4, we are told that God would not allow the Israelites to go into the rest. Now, this rest is deeper. As man rests from his labor, the body is able to regain strength and energy. But also, we need, there is a day that God has placed, put in position that we need to keep. And when we rest the whole day, our system is toned down and our cells are restored and rejuvenated. Would you like to study more about the Sabbath in relation to your health? Yes, brother, it is very important for me. Um, and then you give a truck. You can have this truck to go in and study. And you will find my contact down there. If you find anything that is interesting and you want me to explain for you further, you can come tomorrow. In fact, what is waste? Give me your contract, and then you have just begun ministry. Mm -hmm. It is very easy, and God is making us making it uh, making it easy for us to to reach unto the soul. So this is a memorial in the city to tell the people that there is a place here. This is a restaurant that do not operate on a Sabbath. On a Sabbath, you won't find them operating. They will have helped you today or you're sick. They will have helped this uh, restaurant there, but today is their Sabbath. They are not fellowshipping. They are not operating. So if they come, so I did not come out. Oh, I was told yesterday you people don't open. Then you begin just from that point. Another thing that uh, we need to know about uh, the, uh, the, this institution is about the foods that are being prepared there. You know, we have many hotels in the land that are known if you come to Kenya, if you are in Nairobi, you will be told of very big hotels there. Hilton Hotel, another one called, is called Norfolk Hotel. They are known, very expensive hotels. Now you are going to develop something of this sort. 
or something of that standard caliber in the cities. But there's one challenge or one aspect of it that we have to follow. HFM 57.2, inexpensive foods. We are going to grow in, we are going to prepare inexpensive foods. Inexpensive here does not mean that it is very, very cheap, but you have to count the, the costs. I believe that we'll have a class on finance, finances and uh, bookkeeping, and we will know how to do your costing for your food and to make sure that it is well balanced and controlled that everyone can be able to afford. How do you do the cost analysis and pricing for your food stuff? Now it says the food business if entered into largely is going to be more perplexing and soul harrowing. Those who take it up, whatever talent the Lord may give them will meet with many perplexities. Are you ready to meet this perplexity? It's never going to be easy. It says there will be many perplexities. Now, what is it? I have been instructed that the production of health foods is of the Lord's devising and is not to be regarded as a special property of any man. Now, some people, may God, God may give talent and knowledge and they would love to, uh, to patent their knowledge. It is not godly. And also it is not godly to just uh, snatch from someone something that he had begun. But you people need to work together to make sure that the cause of God is largely supported and everyone is served with a lot of kindness. So there should not be monopoly that you want to monopolize. Oh, we are the people who began this uh, hygienic restaurant in this area. So when someone say, oh, can I begin a grocery the other side? Say, no, 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 it is not possible. You, you can go to another town, not here. We are not operating like that. We are working together, no monopoly. The Lord will most surely impress minds in every place to devise means for the maintenance of the interests which are to feed the angry, clothe the naked, and teach the ignorant. Now, you need to be underlining this work. Hygienic restaurant, we are told, number one, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to teach the ignorant. Which verse in the Bible do we find these phrases? Can someone tell me? In Isaiah 58, we, where else? in Matthew chapter 25 from verses 35 to 43. These are the work of the wise virgins. The work of the wise virgin feeding the hungry. How do we feed them? The hygienic restaurant is one of the ways of feeding the hungry. How do we feed them? The garden missionary work of producing foods, growing or teaching people how to produce certain foods, how to control pests and diseases. Um, all these are part of feeding the hungry. With the word of God, as well as physically, with the food that we prepare. We clothe the naked by having the hygienic dressmaking. Yes and teach the ignorant. There are many people who are ignorant whom you are called to teach. Educate them in many, 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 many things. We are learning crocheting here. If during the time when the youth are, are very, well, they are, they are closed and they are closed schools and they're just hanging here and there, you can tap one youth and tell him this is what you can do. If they love doing the sewing or just making some, 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 some things that can be helpful, that is the opportunity to make those people useful in the gospel. Educating them in simple line of book learning and in agriculture. 
do you see your work? Book learning and in agriculture. He will give them wisdom to manufacture necessary wholesome foods. So when we follow this line as it should be, God is going to give us a knowledge to do what? To manufacture food, wisdom in manufacturing the food. We can bake bread, we can sell to the people, we can make biscuits and crackers and, and even, do you know you can bake even chips? Yes. Yeah, and it is not deep fried, it is wholesome, it is healthy. Now, when you teach people that deep fried foods are bad, here, the other side, you can try to prepare your food, the baked food, uh, baked uh, 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 Irish potatoes, that they will love and they tell, you tell them this is not dangerous. Are we together? Yeah, so you need to think, God will give wisdom on how to make these food. He who feeds the ravens and cares for the wild beasts will give wisdom and skill, talent, and ingenuity for the production of wholesome foods which are to be sold to the poor at as low a rate as possible. You mark that? <laughs> so you are going to meet all classes. People know that in your grocery, you are not running at a, at a loss, but at the same time, you are feeding them. You give them something extra, maybe by one or by two. If they go to a normal, normal grocery, the price is, is high. If they come here, you can, you're not running at a loss, but you can feed them. They can see that we, can, we are being fed from the grocery or from this hygienic restaurant because your foods are not very cheap per se, but not also very high that no one can, can afford. So you need to think why then God gives you wisdom on how to, how to do this work. Now it needs wisdom and economy. If you read 58 of HFM says, there is much at stake in this work. The wholesome productions of the earth must be experimented upon in an effort to make wholesome, inexpensive foods. Mark that. Wholesome, inexpensive foods. Foods that are not expensive, but they are made with a food that are found locally and available. If they don't have them, you can grow them. Let's say you, you begin, uh, you are selling broccoli and someone tells you, or may you bake some broccoli, broccoli fritters. Have you ever eaten baked uh, broccoli? Mm. Yes, or some, uh, uh, we call it cauliflower manchurian. <laughs> I think we'll try that one. Uh, someone is, they say, what is this? And that is <laughs> that is a plant that is not meat. They say, where is it? Where where do you find it? Come on, it is it can be grown. And then from that time, you begin teaching them how to grow those simple food. Make sure that those things that you use in cooking your food, you are able to tell somebody how to grow them and even if possible, they can give you a contact. And if you have a garden missionary minister with you, they can go and teach that people. And this is how we evangelize the world. The food business is to be made the subject of earnest prayer. Subject of what? Mm. Earnest prayer, because you are in a place with a lot of trials and perplexities. Let the people ask God for wisdom to prepare all some foods. You fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two small fishes will supply the needs of his children today. After Christ performed this wonderful miracle, he gave a lesson on economy. After the hunger of the multitude had been satisfied, he said, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. And they took up the fragments that remain 12 baskets. Now here you must apply wisdom and economy. You need to calculate. 
that how many how many customers always visit me and average me so that you don't just prepare much food that is going to remain and then it is going to be a waste or in a waste in this case sometimes people will not buy and you are trying to say oh this, this thing is going to go bad let me just give it for free because no one is coming and let's say it is on friday you are you're preparing for sabbath and uh, you prepare a, a lot of food and tomorrow you will not be serving what do you do you have to give it away and those food some you bought and some are required your effort so you need to be someone who is so economical and so frugal who knows how to plan and execute so that you don't waste a lot of food and also in your serving and preparations and your planning you need to plan very well so that you know what you need to prepare at what time you need to have things that preserve the food or like things like grains that those that you can buy at bulk that may go last for a long time to save you of continually buying so that you reduce the cost are we together you need to invest on the preservative uh, uh, instruments if you are doing using you need to have a freezer you need to pray for god to provide you that so that you don't go run to a loss and always uh, you make sure that your customers get what they want at the right time so you need preservation uh, mechanisms you need to have the glass bottles have you ever seen the glass bottles the glass bottles for canning you can the food and put them there they don't run moldy you need to uh you need to study a lot to know ways in which you can preserve your food and also you need to experiment on uh, um, how you make some flour i was telling us here sometimes but that you can plan uh, if you study different kinds of foods and their nutri nutrition elements or components you can come up with a formula this is a diabetic formula this one can help hiv in aids patients this one can help those who are having high blood pressure you need to source for the food products that you are going to use like what what are the common things that you will have to stock in your food store salt the good salt when you are teaching people about bad salt table salt what do you give them the good salt you are not going to sell it exorbitantly you are selling it at a price that all can afford you are going to have some simple formulas for cough for if someone is having blood pressure just something simple with the things that are available there so you need to learn these techniques and uh, and have them by your side so that you be helpful and you be efficient in your supply you need to be someone who is thinking very fast and can operate very fast hygienic restaurants do not need people who are who are going slow they to be very fast very fast because you find uh, there are four people in a lot so you need to be about three people serving and someone is uh, is there to see what really um, is going on so that they can be able to coordinate well so wisdom and economy is needed one of the ways of economy if you need if you are buying a lot of products you need to now think we need to have begin growing them so that it reduces the cost and the prices and as well as waste this is the test of a successful 
hygienic restaurant manager. Is someone who can execute very well and be able to tell people uh, the proportions and the quantities that are needed for the work to, to continue without failing. Because we don't want to begin something that is going to, to run to a loss or bankrupt. Yet it should be a, an institution that is generating finances for the running of ministry, for the establishment of other ministerial lines. So here it demands a lot of wisdom. Without this, it is done to fail. Are we together? Yeah. yeah, so that is a character that we have to, uh, to practice. Now, we are told in HFM 60.3 that our, our hygienic restaurant needs to be connected with sanitarians. Hygienic restaurants need to be connected with sanitarians. For its success, it needs to be connected with the sanitary. It says the Lord desires us to be sensible and to reason from cause to effect. Wherever a sanitarium is established, facilities are to be provided to a greater or smaller extent as the case may demand for the preparation of healthful foods. We are living amid the perils of the last days and the Lord desires his people to establish industries in different countries. Industries should be established in connection with the uh, sanitarium, but at the present time, it is impossible to define exactly what they should be. This will open before you as you advance in your work. Why should it be connected with the sanitarium? because you'll be meeting many sick people. Some will need uh, very careful attention. So when they, they can be done, uh, you can do for them simple treatments, but advanced treatments can be done in the mm -hmm. hygienic or in the sanitariums. So it is this, if we were doing the, 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 the institutional work, no Adventist will say that I don't have means. Are you seeing this? Is it, is it true? Yes. yes, it is true. And the cause of God will not lag behind. It is because of selfishness and everyone desiring to have his own, go his own way, operate in his own way. That is why we are behind and we don't make impression in the hearts of men. But when we were working, if you were working according to God's plan, we would uh, spread the good news to the whole world. The everlasting gospel would have been shown to the world as a witness. Industries would have been established. And when we're speaking about industry, they are, these are not very big industries. From homes and small facilities, we will be having products to give, and they, they will be good products. We'll be having uh, Adventist market food product. In those market, which type of commodities are being sold? Organic, fresh produce. We will be having, you know, the Indians have their market. Mm -hmm. The Muslims, most of them have their market because they understand what health is. What about other Christians? We don't care. Say, yes? Yeah, because they know things about health. But we Christians, we become so presumptuous that we don't see a need of having a, an Adventist economy where we have our products that are not genetically modified, that are not inorganically grown. If we want to preach the health message in its verity, our people just have to be decided. 
and we will treat all ourselves as equal a farmer and a, a home missionary and, and and a christian cook and a gospel minister all will be working together for the cause of the gospel industries need to be for whether it is a bakery in your house you can just you know you can have a bakery in your house like really here and begin a bakery that can supply the whole cake if she chooses she just need workers in and uh, maybe implement and if there's another one the other side uh, if we are working in regions in uganda you have someone who can supply i tell you we can evangelize the work very easy <coughs> Well, I want to I have 10 minutes and uh, I'm going to tackle another stage, another part of the hygienic restaurant. Educating by demonstration. That is another line that we need to understand. How are you supposed to educate? It is by demonstration. HFM 72.2. We must educate by educating, by demonstrating. There is a great work to be done in bringing the principles of health reform to the notice of the people. Public meetings should be held to introduce the subject. What is to be held? Public meetings and school should be held in which those who are interested can be told more particularly about our health foods and of how a wholesome, nourishing, appetizing diet can be provided without the use of meat, tea, or coffee. We are not just to stand there and tell people this is wrong, this is bad, this is wrong, but to tell them this is good, this is good and this is bad by demonstration. If it is bread, we have it there. If it is milk, it is there. If it is substitutes for meat, they are there. So it chunks. You prepare things like, have you ever gone to the supermarket and found uh, cashew nut milk being sold or almond milk being sold? Yes. So there are very many people who will actually be interested in these things when you can supply. It is very difficult, I tell you, even in the treatment, I've realized that um, it is very easy to teach people about this, 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 that, but it is always difficult for those people to get those stuff. So for to make it easy that you reach out many classes, and many people find it convenient, to uh, remedy the defects that is in their bodies, we need to have this demonstrated to them and made available for them. Well, so there should be demonstration, first public meetings, and these public meetings are to interest the people, giving them interest on health foods, on, on health reform. And then a school is established. You will have those who are interested. You're just doing an open air public meeting. And today we are teaching people about cookery. You demonstrate on the males or how to bake simple foods, how to make some simple juices. This is for cancer, this is for diabetes, this is for pressure. And then if you are interested, you can fill this form and we book an appointment. Are you seeing that? so that your ministry is become so effective. And when they come, they are educated on various lines on the principles of health. Uh, we taught the people by demonstration that we can safely depend for the sustenance of life upon the productions which God gave our first parents in Eden. Let them engage in this work who can speak on the principles of health reform. So there is a call for teachers and educators in this line. It is an expo. It is an expo. 
and expo requires a lot of skills and a lot of determination and a lot of stuff. And when well done, you can capture the whole village or the whole town so that people can get the message for this time. Now, I believe that we have been blessed uh, with this, uh, this class and I'm looking forward to taking us through the sanitarium work in connection to hygienic restaurant in our next class. So we will go for a break for 10 minutes and then we come back for the class. Can we pray to end? Our most gracious Father, what in heaven, Jehovah King of glory, we thank you for giving us this chance and opportunity to learn about hygienic restaurant work and all that it entails and how we need to operate it. We pray that you provide for us means you give us opportunity to do all that you desire us to do in this time while the winds are still hold by holding by your holy angels. Be with us and bless us together in Jesus Christ, I pray to you. Amen. Amen.